This morning, I want to talk about strength in troubled times. It is the last sermon of our sermon series titled, Why Problems Are Good for Us. Our scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27 to 31. Or do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exalted. But those who wait upon, those who wait for the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Strength in troubled times. In times of trouble and hardship, often our physical, emotional, spiritual energy and strength is depleted. The nights are long. Waking up in the morning can be exhausting and a challenge. Staying focused on a task becomes difficult and hard to complete. We become tired and weary we lose the energy to tackle the simple task of life. There are some challenges that are harder and much tougher than others. You see, Louise was a lively, playful girl who brought smiles to all she met. At the age of five, she tragically succumbed to a rare disease. Her sudden passing was a shock to her parents, Dave, they and Peter, and to all who worked with them. Totally surprised, taken by the unexpected. Yet her parents found strength to keep going. When asked how they were coping, the mother said, by God's grace and strength. We can navigate through the grief and continue to do what he has entrusted to us. Only by the grace of God and the strength could Peter and they manage one day at a time. While some of you have experienced that in this congregation, most of us have had other life challenges that leave us out without strength and power and the will to move ahead. Where do we get the power to continue going and not to give up? Where do we get the renewed strength? Where do we restore the energy? We get it from God, our creator, and everlasting Lord, whose power and strength never faint, a God who's always available to assist, to empower, to recharge us, to re-strengthen us, to renew us as needed. We find in this biblical text the people of God are in exile. They finally hear words of chapter 40 of comfort, comfort my people, the words from the prophet. But these people are discouraged, dismayed. They've had to deal with the destruction of their beautiful city, Jerusalem. The temple is at waste. They have become refugees and have been taken to exile. And those who've laid behind are in deep and hardship. The psalmist captures the emotions and the despair of the people in Psalm 137 when he writes, by the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remember Zion. How can we sing songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? How can we celebrate? How can we worship? How can we lift our hands to heaven? where we're far from home, in a place of despair, and we feel hopeless. These people are tired, they're weak, they feel powerless, 
Even the young who normally would have energy to push forward, the prophet says, even them are exhausted and weary by the challenges they are facing. What's interesting about this passage is that the people not only feel in the, that they're in a place of despair, but they feel that in their suffering, God is silent and absent. That's why they say, and you hear the words, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by God. They feel that God doesn't see what they see. God doesn't feel what they feel. God doesn't care for them. God doesn't care about where they're at. They feel that God is not attentive, that God is transcendent, therefore unable to attend to the cares of humanity and the struggles. Where is God in my pain? Where is God in my isolation and desolation? Where is God in my despair and hopelessness? Where is God in my dark moment? This is the struggle of the people of God as they hear the prophet bringing words of comfort and what the future is to become. How many of us struggle with those moments like that when we feel that God is absent? that God is not present, that God is not available. Reminds me of the little illustration of a pilot flying a small plane with a few uh, passengers and suddenly there's a problem and the, and the plane is beginning to descend and, and he's struggling and the pilot decides, he puts on his parachute and he's beginning to walk out and he opened the door and the passenger asks him, where are you going? And the pilot said, I'm, I'm going to go get some help. <laughs> Sometimes we feel that way. God, where are you? You've left me alone. You've left me in this place. I'm abandoned. I feel abandoned. I feel that others have left me alone. You see, in this passage as, we're, uh, as well, mentions that God's ways are unsearchable. You cannot uh, get your hands around God. When we think that God is coming from the north, God comes from the south. When we think that God is coming from the east, he comes from the west. And we think that God is coming, God doesn't seem to come. Hard to figure out at times. Where is God is a question of the people. Yes, God has told them through the prophets, and he gave them early warning to repent. They refused. They decided to follow their ways, and they were experiencing the consequences of their walk now in exile. But the prophet responds to this cry and this plea of feeling disregarded and abandoned and God being absent. He says, have you not known Have you not heard what happened? In their suffering, they have forgotten the God of the Exodus. In their suffering, they have forgotten the God of creation. In their suffering, they have forgotten the God of Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and Naomi and Deborah and of King David in their Suffering, they have forgotten all the blessing. They have a, a memory lapse of forgetting things. And sometimes that happens to all of us. We forget that God has been with us and God has been with the people of Israel. He says, have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God is everlasting. The seasons come, the seasons go. God is always present, the Alpha and the Omega, as the writer of Revelation proclaimed. God is a constant present. Generations come and generations go. 
We sit on the shoulders of those who came before us. They came, they left, and God is still God. In the 1960s, when Time magazine had an article that said, God is dead. The theology of the death of God. I don't know if you heard of that. And guess what? (laughs) God is more alive today than he was in the 60s. God is constant, present, everlasting. God is the creator of the earth, the creator of our beings. The creator means that the God is able to make a way where there is no way. They have forgotten this. And the prophet has got to remind them. And he goes on to say that not only is God a creator everlasting, but God is all-knowing, all-powerful. By the time we have the ha-ha moment, God has been there waiting for us. God's energy and power and strength is never ending and never ceases, for he's always present and everlasting. People are tired, they feel powerless, weary. Young will faint and become exhausted. But then the prophet declares the following words, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like, with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But who wants to wait? Anybody? Any volunteers? Who wants to wait? I mean, most of us don't like waiting for the green light. I mean, most of us that are here now are so happy when we drive because those folks have left Naples. But thank God for those folks. We need them. (laughs) We don't like waiting online at the supermarket. If you still shop at the supermarket, some young people never get to the supermarket. They never go to the retail stores. They do everything online. But those from the old school, as we say. But who wants to be on a line? As one of our staff noted, and well said, because we sit around on Tuesdays and ponder and reflect on the sermon to come. He said, everything in our societies is engineered not to wait. Well said, right? Everything in our society is engineered not to wait. We don't like waiting. We don't like to be told to wait, especially those that are quick, fast-moving folks. Type A, people who want to make it, get it done and get it done now. (laughs) I know some of you here. (laughs) That's how we are, we're wired. But waiting is part of the process. For those who wait, you wait when the trials are difficult. You wait when there's no quick, easy answer. You wait when the challenge is beyond your power and your strength. You wait when you have been told to come back four weeks from now and get the results of your exam. You wait. You wait when your children call you and tell you they're in a difficult place and you desperately feel for them, but you must wait because it's their lives as well. But in Scripture, waiting is not a passive, but it's an active process. Waiting is not being um, complacent. Waiting is being engaged, intertwined with God in terms of our relationship and faith. As we wait, we draw closer to God through worship and through praises. As we wait, we, we listen to the words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 15, 16, and 18. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. But let me be clear, it doesn't say for all circumstances, circumstances. It says, in all circumstances. For even goes on to say, in in audacious words, it says, for this is the will of God, which is hard at times to grapple with. We wait with hope and expectations. 
We wait because we trust in the character of God, in the essence of the Creator, the everlasting God. That is the message of the prophet. We wait because it is not waiting on human effort. It's waiting on the one who designed us, created us, and is present with us. And what happens when we wait? What happens to those who wait upon him? They shall mount up with wings like eagles who rise above the storms. Sometimes that's what it means. The Lord will give you that strength and you rise above. You know how high an eagle can go? 10 to 15,000 feet high. There's no bird that can rise above the storms. As a matter of fact, when they're training their little eagles, they let them go. And the thing is trying to figure how to fly. And suddenly the mother comes in and the little bird eagle lands on the wings. The wings are spread about eight feet or more. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you know, but there's a new basketball player that was just drafted for, to the NBA, just to give you FYI here. His spang wing, uh, right, did I say that? Is eight feet long. He's a young kid from France. You can glide on that boy. <laughs> Woo, take me. He will give you, he'll mount you up like the eagle's wings and on top and he'll rise you above your troubles and you look down. You know that the eagle catches the wind and rises up with little energy. He uses the prophet, uses his metaphor. The Lord will rise you up your trouble. Other times, God will give us the strength and energy to run and not get tired. Some of us can run through Sometimes you rise up, sometimes you run. And if you know that if you're runners, runners, people who run here, who've ran in the past, you got to catch that second wind sometimes. You're losing it. And if you can hang in there, you get it and you keep going and you could do the miles that you're in front of you. But sometimes some of us can no longer rise and some of us can no longer run. And sometimes what God does, he just gives us enough strength to walk and not faint. And I think all the majority here can do that. We can walk and not faint as we face our troubles. So, I don't know what circumstances you're in, what's making you spiritually, emotionally weary and tired and faint of faith. But I just want to say as I wrap up the sermon series is don't give up. Don't give up. Never quit. Never give in. Never do what Roberto Duran did in the boxing match against Leonard, for those who are bo boxing fans. And for those that are not, he threw in the towel and he said in Spanish, no mas, no more. Don't throw the towel in. If you did, pick it up <laughs> quickly. Don't give up. The Lord who created the world, the everlasting God who renew your strength, mount you on wings like an eagle, soar high above your troubles, will give you the power just to run through or maybe all you need today is to walk. And my friends, when you walk in life or you walk through your troubles, you could only take one step at a time. As you take one step, take it with faith, take it with hope, the expectations that you lean on the character of God. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us lean on him. Trust his grace and love to carry us in troubled times. If we trust him and submit to him, we will endure even the toughest challenges in life and even thrive in the midst of our challenges because those who wait and lean upon him shall be renewed and restored. 
with new strength and new energy. Amen? Lord, help us to lean on you. We come to you sometimes in the place that we find ourselves. You know each of us, our needs here. You said, come all those who are weary and burdened. For those who are in that place, we pray that you will give them rest. For those who are unaware of what is to come, that your words will ring loud in their hearts and minds when they face those challenging moments. Lord, if you're not going to rise us up or get us through running through our problems, Lord, just help us to take one step at a time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.